Making chicken alfredo the easy way. Um, here we have the crock pot express and the Octagrill Elite. Um, first of all, I'll show you the ingredients we're using. We have garlic, frozen in cubes and defrosted for 30 seconds in the microwave. We have one bit of Parmesan cheese, which is a wedge of Parmesan cheese, approximately 100 to 125 grams. We have cream. So normally they specify maybe about 200 milliliters of cream. However, you can do it by eye. You can have a little bit more, or a little bit less accordingly. Hence why I've got sort of three, 400 mils here. Might use a bit more, might use a bit less. We have pasta. So we have 400 grams of pasta. We have chicken. So 600 grams of chopped chicken breast ready to go. That's fresh. We have 700 ml of stock, that's chicken stock. Two stock cubes in, boil of water, mix it up, and that's your chicken stock. A bit of salt and pepper. One bag of spinach, approximately 600 to 700 grams of spinach, that's fresh, that's rinsed, and some olive oil. So, I'm gonna start here with the Crock-Pot Express. What we want to do is we want to use the sauce aid from the machine there. So here we are, button just here, and we'll make a start with that. Whilst we also have the Optigrill Elite, so I'll switch that on, and that one will be doing the chicken. So what I'm aiming to do is pre-cooking the chicken with using the Optigrill Elite, so that'll be grilled chicken and cooking the pasta and um, the rest all in the instant pot, uh, the crock pot express. So here we have automatic modes. So I just need to find the chicken setting. Chicken, chicken breast. There we go, chicken breast. So that will cook to whatever, whether it's rare, medium, well done. I wouldn't recommend rare, probably more in the range of medium to well done. Meanwhile, obviously this will be heating up and I can do the garlic. So we've got the crock pot express, which is heating now. That's essentially like a frying pan. I'm gonna add some olive oil to the crock pot. All while sitting down. The main element is preparing the ingredients beforehand. So if you've got the ingredients prepared, you've got everything ready to go. Um, it's just a question of add this then, add that then, and add this then. All in one order, and it makes it very simple. The appliances will take care of the rest. So the Optigrill is just coming up to temperature, and the crock pot is also coming up to temperature. I have some utensils here, so I have three utensils. I have a ladle for serving, a spatula for mixing and scraping, and some tongs for moving things about. Both of which are in the preheating stage at the moment. So we're just waiting for those to warm up. Meanwhile, I've added the oil, I can add my garlic. In a good sizzle. I use a spatula here. And pepper. I tend to prefer to use rainbow pepper because it's got an assortment of different colours, lots of different peppercorns in there. And Himalayan salt. A bit more nutritious than regular salt. A lot of garlic that's whizzing around, just frying that off. So I'm going to switch that off for a minute whilst we wait for the chicken to, to, to do its thing. And that's going to cook the garlic nicely. As it's better to have fried garlic rather than raw garlic into a boiled mixture. Um, gives it a little bit more flavour, roasting the garlic. 
So the arrows are coming around, um, they're still in the preheating phase. Just waiting for the arrows to get to the ready done and it will beep and it will give us the cue so that we know when to add the chicken. Have the chicken here. Just, here's the chicken ready to go. cheese so hopefully the aim is doing two things at the same time using two appliances makes it twice as quick because then you've got the frying happening at the same time um, as the cooking which is, is, is quite effective and also you're doubling down on the flavor obviously grilled food tends to have a, a, a stronger flavor um, than, than just doing it straight away in the instant pot as a raw 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 meat so we'll pre-grill the chicken we could saute it straight away in the uh, in the crock pot um, on the on the saute mode and just stir it around and that would that would work too just thought the flavor profile of the chicken would be a little bit nicer so i'm going to add a bit of pepper Pepper. Nearly there with the preheating. Once the preheating comes into uh, to its uh, final phase, we come up to ready to go. I'll add all the chicken onto the plates. Luckily, the plates are non-stick, which is great. It means obviously it's very easy to just take them out, put them in the dishwasher, or wash them in a bowl of soapy water once they're cooled down. Um, and also, you don't have to worry so much about the food sticking to the the grates or the grill, which is another fantastic thing all saves time. The great thing I like about these is the fact that obviously you can just put them any, in any place, any surface, as long as you've got electric, you can cook um, quite freely. Um, it's generally best to pre-prepare your ingredients so that you've got everything ready for when it comes to cook time. Um, that way you can just add them when you, when you want to. So it's just giving me the cue now to insert my food. Down. That'll measure. Oh, this is a chicken. There we go. Pop that down. So that's going to measure the thickness of the chicken. That's going to cook automatically. Um, I did just touch raw chicken, so here I have. Come Joe. Oh, that's good. The other thing I'll uh, mention is obviously handling raw chicken. That utensil is now handled raw chicken, so I don't really want to be reusing that because obviously salmonella risk. So make sure you keep your raw um, utensils separate from your cooked utensils. So once you move things about when they're raw, you then put them to one side, leave them for washing, and then move on to a separate utensil when you want to remove them. So the blue arrow is just started, so that's the start of the cooking. We need to wait for it to go round to the um, yellow and then the orange. Um, which is kind of your rare medium to well done. We want medium to well done, which is the uh, important part. This is going to enhance the flavour of the food. The other benefit is I don't physically have to be present um, necessarily it will beep when it's ready so it will kind of beckon me to come back and uh, take things off of the uh, the grill um, onto the next stage it'll let me know when it's ready so it's saying it's going to be well done in 14 minutes so we've got 14 minutes for the uh, the chicken to be to be cooked
So in the meantime, whilst we were waiting for the chicken to be ready, um, it's got four minutes to go. Uh, I've managed to get all of the plates ready, three plates. I've managed to get the cutlery sorted, um, got juices, so that's all sorted. because so we're looking for three meals to, for this to make up. Um, I've managed to get another spatula because obviously I want to take the chicken off the grill. I forgot about that before. And I like to add some herbs to um, a, add more antioxidants and add more flavour to the food. So we've got oregano and basil, um, both of which are Italian themed and um, they tend to go very well with this sort of meal, um, which is, is always a nice addition. I like to try and add herbs where possible because they do add an enormous amount of flavour. So I still have 3 minutes 24. So what I can do now is we have the pasta. Pasta's ready to go into the garlic. Along with the stock. So that's the stock. Just gotta make sure with the stock cubes that they sometimes leave a bit of stock in the bottom. So I just wanna give that a swirl. That's all clear, that's all the stock in there. Um, the other thing that's quite important with this is making sure that the pasta's um, fairly submerged because it tends to cook better when it's all in the water. And we're just waiting now to have a sneak peek. That's looking good. In fact, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's, that's, that's fine, that'll cook off nicely. So I can stop the grill. So that's ready for me to add into the pasta. chicken with the char marks. This will also steam the chicken so it'll make it a lot more succulent. So you get the flavour of the grilling which is nice and the succulence of the steaming and the pressure cooking which is extra nice. herbs, basil and the oregano, those two there, and then we've got the bowl of spinach, so we'll add spinach. Now sometimes you might wish to add the spinach after, sometimes you can add it during. I prefer to add it whilst it cooks as well, as it all kind of moulds together. is the flavour I think, not to mention the spinach shrinks down a bit better when it's being cooked. So the instant pot is suggests, sorry, the instant pot crock pocket express, it normally suggests to do about four minutes. So once again, got to check, make sure the lid's unlocked, locked, so that seals the, the, the crock pot. And then we want manual mode. So manual mode is top left, manual mode, and then it's four minutes. Now this is a Crock-Pot Express Turbo. So this has a turbo button. I like this because it tends to do a better job of cooking and it's meant to add 20% um, to the, the, the efficiency. So it makes it 20% faster. Nonetheless, um, I'll set it to four minutes. So it's a four minute cook time and a four minute depressurize. So that means that you leave, it's called a natural depressurize, which means you just leave it. You don't turn the vent straight away. You leave it for four minutes and then you can turn the vent. And that's, uh, that's, that's how that natural pressure depressurization works. So we've got the status coming up to temperature. And once it comes up to temperature, it'll start. And that means that obviously the, 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 the food will start cooking and that will, that will initiate the countdown of the four minutes that we've set on the machine. Meanwhile, the grill, the grill will start cooling down, obviously, as we've switched it off. In fact, what I like to try and do is I've switched it off, but I'll unplug it as well. That's that one there. So that's now fully unplugged. And that's going to cool down. These plates are removable. So there's a button on the side here and a button on the side here but it's really important to wait for these to cool down because they're molten hot at the moment, very, very hot, so you can't really touch them and it wouldn't be wise to try and clean them whilst they're this hot. 
Um, that said, you probably could put a wet paper towel on there and just kind of leave it moist, but generally they clean so easily it's not really necessary. We have the drip tray as well. So the drip tray, um, obviously I'll pour away the, uh, the juice, um, pour it into the food bin and, and that, will go in, that will go into the dishwasher or into a bowl of soapy water. I can wash it all nice and easily, dry it all off and put it all back, back in the cupboard. Um, with this, this doesn't need to go in the dishwasher or anything as such, or in, uh, just a, a quick swish with some soapy water. I wipe around with a towel and it's, um, you yeah, know, only takes a, a 30 seconds to a couple of minutes max to, to clean that once it's done. So it's very, very easy cleaning. The, the overall, the, the ease of use with these things is, is brilliant. Um, it is hands off. I'm not really rushing around. Um, in the time that this is doing its thing, unlike a pan where you have to tend to it, you can kind of just leave it to, to its own devices and it'll beep when uh, when it's ready, uh, which means you're free to do whatever it is you want to do. And obviously you can put your attention elsewhere. Things like preparation for meals, getting your plates and getting your drinks and, and, and cutlery ready, which is, is the all important bit. Um, something that takes all the stress out because obviously if you're trying to cook and trying to prepare um, the plates and trying to prepare the cutlery and trying to prepare the juice you end up burning something or you end up with uh, um, something not going quite right um, missing something which all adds to the stress and makes it a bit chaotic also journey wise when you're kind of rushing around the kitchen trying to logistically sort things um, it makes it a bit chaotic as well so with this everything's kind of nice and easy and all taken care of even to a point where I can sit in a chair um, I'm not even in the kitchen and I can I can I can cook a meal as if I was in the kitchen. So it's just come up to the four minute mark. Um, obviously, it's done the cook. It's now done the four minute um, pressure natural pressure release. So I can stop that. Open the valve. In the meantime. I've managed to clear away. You might find that the, uh, the uh, grill's been cleared away, so that's the kind of key bit, really. It's given me time to do a few things, a bit of prep beforehand, um, which usually, obviously, when you're intensively cooking on a pan, if you're watching things, you don't really get the time to do. Um, so that's always nice. So we're just waiting for this now to depressurize. I did put a kitchen towel, a bit of wet kitchen towel on the plates of the Opti Grill, um, which meant that obviously it just kind of pulls it down a bit more quickly and just soaks the plates. Not that you really need to, but it's just a matter of preference really. Once uh, that's cooled down, I can put that into a dishwasher or a bowl of soapy water and give that a wash over, um, and that washes up no problem at all. We now have our other ingredients, we have our cheese, so that's hard cheese or parmesan cheese, um, I've grated that earlier, that came as a wedge, um, about 100 to 200 grams, um, that one there, but I mean you don't have to be too specific on the, on the cheese, you can add more or less according to your preference. Uh, that's one of the great things I've found with this type of cooking sort of thing, you can um, have a lot of leeway on the amounts and the quantities that you add and it doesn't really affect the cooking process. So obviously we've got our cheese, got the cream, uh, salt and pepper. Have a label at the ready. So we have a label and tongs. And then the plates are almost ready. But we just need to do the next cook bit, which is adding the cheese and the cream. It is nice the way everything's so well paced out. Everything's kind of controlled in a, in a, in a timed manner. So you can kind of predict um, when things are gonna cook and what you can do in between. And it gives, it gives you the ability then to be a lot more able rather than being a bit more spontaneous and having to kind of wonder when, thing, when you're gonna get gaps in time to do this and that and all the rest of it and, and working on the cusp sort of thing. Um, this just gives, slows things down and just gives you that time.
So you remember me saying this was the Crock-Pot Express Turbo. Um, that means that the Crock-Pot Express um, doesn't have the turbo pressure button and that means that it makes things 20% faster. You can um, set the time on this as a normal crock pot and then uh, press the turbo and it will just deduct 20% off of the time and it uh, claims to cook at the same um, same ability but just 20% faster. I tend to just use the turbo pressure mode anyway in the same way um, as just an additive so it just increases the pressure so I don't adjust the timing so I just press the button anyway and I find that that's um, that's, that's, that's made a, I think a noticeable difference it makes things more succulent and it makes it, it kind of nicer to, to eat so we've got the uh, lid has just come down from pressure so it means that we can just undo that so obviously this is going to the side we have Spinach, pasta, chicken, and give that a stir. Let's see how it's hot, hot, hot. Right, and now it's go time. So, cream or cheese, cheese or cream? Hmm, good question. So, I'm going to add the cheese first. And that's all of the cheese. Give that a good stir. So you can see here, got the pasta, got the spinach, got the chicken, and we're just adding the cheese, give the cheese a bit of a chance to melt. Spinach is cooked to a nice consistency as well. It's all in one. That's one of the nice things about this, you can pretty much throw everything in together, one pot, one pan, whatever, and it will cook nicely. Um, so it does save on washing up and minding more pans. So it's about a third of a pot of cream. I always like to smell the cream, just double check. Classic smell test. We've added the cream now. And that is done. Here we have creamy pasta alfredo, alfredo, which is uh, chicken, spinach, pasta, cheese. Um, it's a, an Italian themed dish, ready to plate up. So you can put this on to keep warm. This does have a keep warm option, which means that you can just kind of keep it up to temperature for any period of time you like, up to four hours, I think, which is very, very handy. It gives you that um, sense that you don't have to worry about it going cold, which is nice. So that part doesn't matter. Unlike cooking on a pan where you've got to serve up instantly. So I've got a ladle, one ladle, one plate. We have one. Hey presto. There we go. That's that one there. And another plate. And there we go. It's that one there. Then have another plate and usually you always end up with a bit to spare the way this cooks things go a long way okay and another plate so at this point you can either add a few more herbs a bit of pepper a bit of pepper Fun fact, pepper helps you uh, get more nutrition from your food, which is always a bonus, and it makes things a bit more flavorful too. We'll see, there's also a good portion left, which we can save for another time, save for later, pop in the fridge, have a meal portion, whatever, um, freeze it and eat it later, which is good too. Um, but other than that, that's three meals all served up. No hassle, no fuss. This is cooking the easy way.